Hello, everybody, and welcome. So if you guys are watching this, you're probably interested in learning what the heck a byte addressable RAM is. Um, so a regular RAM is kind of, well, when I say regular RAM, I mean the easy way to hook up RAM would just be um, you have uh, your word size is 8 bits, then you make all of your words in RAM 8 bits, and each address holds 8 bits. If your words are 16 bits, the easy way to do it in RAM is to make every address in RAM hold 16 bits. So ideally, whatever register operation you're able to do, you're able to just push the result into RAM in just a single uh, address. You don't have to worry about storing it in multiple addresses. Um, byte addressable RAM is, well, uh, exactly what the name implies. Each address is only addressing a single byte. So if you wanted to make a 16-bit number, you would have to use two addresses. And then you run into issues about, well, there's easy and hard way to make it use two addresses. I can make it, uh, if I'm writing a word, I can, be, I can force the address to have to start with a zero. If I force the address to have to start with the zero, that means it's like aligned. Um, so that's called, you know, a, an aligned memory. So we're going to have an aligned uh, byte addressable memory. And by aligned, I mean it will uh, throw an error if you try to write a word to an address that doesn't begin with zero. Um, so think about it. If I have to write a word which is two bytes and I'm addressing to address one instead of address zero, how do, I, how do I roll over? Like, I'm not going to put an adder in here to make it do the logic for where the next address is going to go. I want this to be easy and, you know, easy to use. Okay, so we're going to address, um, starting aligning the address at zero. So if you want to write a, a, a word, the address will take up both the zero and then a one, two. It'll take up both the zero and one position in the least significant bit. But you can write a byte at either a zero position or a one position. And I'll get into how that works and why it works like that in a second. So the idea here is we're going to have a uh, select bit for telling it if we're writing a word. We're going to have a select bit for telling it to write we're writing a byte. We're going to have the same now if we're reading a word or we're reading a byte. Then we have our data that comes in and our address. So if we wanted to, um, if we had 16 bits coming in and we only wanted to write a byte, it's going to write the low 8 bits of that word coming in. Um, so write byte writes the low byte. Write word. So write byte writes the low byte. Write word reads uh, writes the uh, the whole word coming in, not just the low byte of it. So that's how this works. So if you read word and read byte, read word is going. Your address has to be aligned, otherwise it's not going to know how to read it. And then uh, your read byte, it can read from either. It, it doesn't have to be aligned. You'll never get an error. Uh, word not aligned error reading a byte. Um, so yeah, you can do that, and then yeah, the data will come out. So if you re read a byte, only eight bits will come out. But if you read a word, sixteen bits will come out. And it, uh, so you don't have to worry about picking the low on this one because you get to actually choose what address because it's byte address memory. So if you're writing a byte here and sixteen bits are coming in, you just pick since you know it's writing the low eight bits. You can then tell it what address to write to because you know that. So it makes working with this real easy. Here's a clock at the bottom there, and so now we'll get into how this actually works inside there. Okay, so we come into this mess of wires, and it's going to look intimidating, but basically it's the same layout here as before, except uh, the clock is up here now instead of being down here. The data out is down here instead of being over here, and the word aligned is over here instead of being up here. Uh, those are the only differences. But now we can actually see the logic internally. So how does this work? How does it align... Um, one, like to the least significant bit, least significant bit of the address. How does it align it? Well, what we actually do is if we have a 16-bit address, like if you look on here and I right-click on it, you'll see that it's 16 data bits. So if we have a 16-bit address, what we're going to do is 16 bits is really two sets of 15 bits that you can mux between or use both, right? Um, you, uh, two, to, two to the 15 plus two to the 15 is equal to two to the 16. Like, uh, you're doubling it, right? So it just rolls over power. So that's how come we take 16 bits and are able to break it down into two 15-bit addressed RAM banks. So watch what happens if we run this. So if I want to write a word, this is the easy thing. The word is the easy case. So what does it do? Write word comes through, and we basically enable the store into this uh, unit, this RAM bank, and this RAM bank, because we're writing a word. 
and the address for the word is zero aligned. The least significant bit here is zero. So if we follow the logic that would come in here, it takes the zero bit and says, well, if this is uh, not zero anymore, it would come on here and say, well, it would check for this one and it would do the same thing here and check on this one. Come through here like that. And we also have that come in so it gets ended with the control logic for itself. Comes through and then decides whether or not that store should be true. So now watch what happens. If we say we're on address four, we can write an uh, we can write a word to address four because it sees it really as address two in the bank, and it's writing that data to both addresses. There. If you look at the address bus here; it sees it as two. You see that? It sees it sees the address as two because this is a 15-bit bus. That least significant bit on our input here, on our address in just switches between which bank we're writing to unless we're doing or, or we're, which bank we're using unless we're doing a word operation which then we're using both as you can see because it's storing to both so now let's take some data and let's write um, we'll write uh, uh, let's do I want something easy nine six uh, three six oh that's not a three there we go, 9636, six. okay. So we wrote 9636. Six. So 36 is the low byte and 96 is the high byte. So we can see the low byte, 36, comes in on this side. And the high byte, 96, comes in up here. So we can now see the format is low byte gets stored in a low address and high byte gets stored in high address here. So if you write a word, it has to be zero aligned because what it's going to do is it's going to write the least significant bit on the zero one and the most significant bit on the one on top because it's easier to increment by one when you ensure that there is no carry. So that's basically what the system does. So now what we can do is we can take this right word and align it and it's, we see that it's on address four. Uh, the data coming in is that and we can see that we can clock it and now if we read B uh, it's going to read out a read byte. It's going to read out 036 because our address is the same. We're, we didn't change which address we're operating on because it's RAM. It's not a register. Keep that in mind. Um, so if we read the word now, we get 9636. So you can see that when we read the byte, it has no issue reading the low. But now what if we wanted to read the high? Well, now we'd increment by one on the least significant bit of the address because it would now be switching to the opposite bank here. So we click one. Now we're reading from this bank when we do a read byte and now we get the nine six. So we can choose whether or not if when we're reading a byte, if we want the low or the high just by you know in incrementing the address by one, or we could just read out the whole word. But now you can see that we're not gonna be able to read out a word from address five because five is starting with the one. And that doesn't make a sense. We can't, that doesn't make any sense. You can't read a word out from this and the next one because there is no next one it's only this one and that one so you have to be zero aligned so you can see that read word is saying nope not working word not aligned you get that error and then it's up to the user that they can check if they were reading and they got a word not aligned or if they were you, you know like that can be all done all that logic can be done external that's not important to the uh to the to the ram itself this is just for the ram to say nope it's not aligned or it is aligned now you can do whatever the hell you want with that information um so now let's try writing that word um, instead of to uh, to address four, let's try writing it to like whatever the heck this is. Address uh, hex thirty nine. Okay, let's uh, write that. So we'll do that, and immediately you'll see like we didn't press a clock button and it threw it. Just immediately throws the error word not aligned because it can just tell, and it immediately it's not going to allow the storing to occur. And if you try to clock it, it just nothing's going to happen. It, when the store is low like this, it just basically prevents the clock from coming through. It because it, it's not going to write zeros to the you know it, it, to an address. Like that's the important thing with this. Like if uh, if it when it did that, it wrote zeros to whatever address is in there, then that would be bad. But it just so happens that this RAM bank, the way it works, uh, is it works like that. Um, and so these are just the built-in digital RAM banks that anybody has access to. Um, if we stop the simulation, right click, uh, it's RAM separated ports. So if we go to components, 
memory, RAM, RAM separated ports, this top one right here. It's literally that. So that's all I'm using right there and it's built in and it's compatible with FPGA. So basically this can also be put onto a, uh, a Basis 3 for instance, uh, any board that has block RAM. Um, and especially something like this, which is a, which isn't really using too much memory. It's uh, 16 bits total. It's sp split up into two different blocks, so that might be easier for the FPGA to handle anyway. Um, although it may be smarter not going with 16-bit addresses for an FPGA. You know, maybe keep it to like 12 or you know. But uh, I I don't know. I've never actually tried exporting this to my FPGA, but that that'd be pretty interesting to do. Um, so I might actually try that. Um, so anyway, we tried writing uh, a word, but we didn't even try writing a byte, so let's try doing that. So if we write a byte, we tell it, let's do it to address 3. Okay, we're going to write a byte to address 3. The data coming in is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, like that. I don't know why I did that. I could have just typed it in there. Okay, that, that works too. Um, so now you can see 1, 2 comes to this one, 3, 4 comes to this guy here, which can pass through. Um, yeah, I could have probably simplified some of this logic looking back at it, but uh, I kind of built it as I worked through how it needed to work in my head and just came up with this. But uh, yeah, I could totally, totally clean up some of this. Um, you can see as I worked my way down, it started getting cleaner because I saw that it was symmetrical to what I did up here. And then the logic was easier to do the second time than it was the first um, because the read had to follow the right when doing the word not align thing like I showed you previously. So now we're going to write a byte uh, there. Uh, and now we can say we're going to write that to address 3. So the byte that it's going to write, it always picks the low. So it's always going to write 3, 4 here because it always comes to this side. Like that. So we can say address 3. Um, clock it in, and now if we read our byte, we get 034. If we read our word, word's not aligned. Can't write. You can't read a word from address three. All right, now let's write a byte to address two. Well, um, since it wrote the low 34, let's write a 12 over this now. So we'll just write replace this with a 0012. Oops. Alright, so now we're writing a 12, 12 comes in, we're writing the byte, let's clock it, and now if we read our, read our byte, we get the 112, and now if we read our word, we, were sw we switched it. Um, so there's a, an example of a byte addressable memory. I put up a video a while ago on my YouTube vid channel of a byte addressable RAM, and it was complete horse crap. Um, I don't know what I did in that previous video, whatever, ignore anything in that previous video if you've watched it. Basically this is how uh, a dual, uh, uh, a separated port, uh, byte address, sorry, RAM works. And of course then you can get even trickier with this by adding multiple reads to this. Um, so you could do that with uh, an AND gate on here that you can then split out to multiple different addresses. Um, so you can have multi-port RAM. You can have multi-port write RAM, multi-port read RAM, but I was just happy with single port read uh, byte addressable RAM for now. For now. Anyway, uh, there's a reason I made this, and that's going to be because I am working on a CPU coming up. So if we look here, you can actually see that like I'm working on a whole custom pipeline CPU. But uh, this is going to take some time. I don't even know if I want to keep going with this because there's a lot in the ISA that I want to change already. For instance, uh, how I did this, I don't really like how I did some of the ALU features. I'm going to redo those so they work a little bit better. Uh, I want to redo my graphics on this. <laughs> um, and I wanted to redo some of my labeling. This is my register uh, unit. Yeah, and there's a few things I want to work on. So yeah, this is the RAM that's going to be used in this, the data RAM. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys like, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, you know the deal. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.